wanted to present him with something. You heard time and again how many young men, become older men now, uh, wax is touched. Um, I, he knows that in his heart. He knows that through the feedback he's gotten over the years. But we thought it was important to memorialize that. And a small number of those young men who are now older men, some of whom are still young men, uh, have reduced it to writing and share it with you, what you've meant to them, the profound impact you've had on your life. And it should give you great pride to read the letters that have been written to you from the men you've touched. So I look forward to you having the opportunity to read that. So many wonderful things have been touched upon. Uh, I want to get right to a couple things that I had planned on doing. And uh, I guess I stole one of the punchlines already. Uh, I guess somebody said a picture is worth a thousand words. And we watched a lot of pictures. So that will eliminate some of the words I'm going to say tonight. There's some great shots up there. Uh, and what happens to be up there is my granddaughter uh, at one of our alumni games, and she's sitting down here right now, she's as big as her mom, and uh, <laughs> time flies very, very fast when you're having fun, and I'm having a lot of fun, I enjoy coaching, it's been a part of my life for many, many years, I hope to have a few more, believe me, I do. Today we had an alumni game, uh, and I want to thank all the alums that played, it was a tremendous effort. Uh, we had the, the 98 degree risk management phone call. We <laughs> ended up through Tony Vecchio and my boss, to Larry Landano, to the point where we decided we were going to put helmets only on these youngsters and our alums. And uh, we went at it. Uh, it was a great day. Everything was wonderful. Uh, and I think that the, the gang is just tremendous, and it's something that We'll, we'll continue to do. The biggest thing that was missed in the complaint wasn't the fact that we didn't have the, the shoulder pads on today, is that uh, we didn't have chicken and ribs after the game. <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted to know who the pony was, and that happened to clown. But I want to give out two footballs that like we've done for many, many years. There were two young men in that game who were just outstanding. One of them only lasted one play, though. If he'd have had shoulder pads on, he wouldn't have broken his clavicle on the first play of the game. And Mike Stack coming up. I said, yeah, I'll get it. 
I said, but I, we've been told that the trainers aren't allowed to give ice because we need it for the athletes, but we were able to do a little bit of ice. But I want to thank Brenda Dale for doing that tailgate today. And Brenda, for the team job. Many people have been thanked, and uh, John and uh, Alan and Sean did a super job doing that for me. Uh, I will attempt to keep this program moving along. Uh, it does take many, many hardworking people uh, to have a successful program, and the next generation that's going to do this is my current team. Uh, I was, I am. Mike Bean, we should stand up one of our captains again, Mike McCurdy, Chief Flash, and my captain. I'm not going to run you to death. I appreciate the, the things that you did. It's part of us, and thank you for a nice job. And the other thing I want to mention is uh, I think it's time for a seventh inning stretch, even though this is a football team. And my current football coach, give us a little stand up so everybody can see what they look like. already on that. However, uh, what I had planned on doing is something that's been dear to me. Uh, each year we've done something great in this program. The, the men before that needed guidance and counseling. Um, before it was basically mandatory to have faculty advisors. I really think it's important that I give credit to three people, three men who've really been part of that for many, many years. Uh, uh, Peter Hand is here with his wife, Chris. Peter. Uh, and has done a tremendous job. He's now retired. He's now an honorary faculty advisor, okay? Back in the early uh, part of my career, a running back by the name of Steve Galletta became a big time doctor in his school. Uh, he also became a second faculty advisor. Steve not only is a, an All-Ivy League and the Schmucker Award winner and many, many tremendous things, he did average 100 yards every game for four years. Uh, Dr. Stephen Gillette, thank you. someone who played on the sprint football team in 1965 working here at the university. And that's Bob there. Offensive guard, Bob, thank you. Thank you for being here. And you know, there is tremendous work and effort that's put into all of this. Uh, and I certainly haven't done it alone. Uh, believe me, I know that. I have great coaches. I think they deserve a few moments of, 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 of credit. And I want to introduce uh, Rich Cousy and his wife Susie. Okay, just give me a My offensive coordinator, Jerry, uh, has two sons that were ball boys for many years, but then they became a violation if they were on the sideline when they became ninth graders are now uh, in college. One's a Duke King and freshman, the other one's got a game at Lafayette, plays for Sacred Heart. Jerry is on his way up there right now. His son is going to be the starting center at Sacred Heart. He's only 285. A dear buddy who runs a defense, and one long time friend, uh, John Amet and Linda. John, where are you, buddy? Thank you. Another long-time friend of mine, who a 
I can remember when Ralph was about six foot, 175 pounds, and he was playing high school ball. I was coaching baseball, and he was had 26 straight stolen bases. Right? And I knew that I'm coaching this team. So what do we do? We pitch out first time, and we throw Ralph out. <laughs> Ralph and I have played baseball together for many years. He's now my coordinator of operations. Ralph Ross. We have some new men uh, added to the staff. A young guy from South Jersey, played at Cherry Hill West, uh, went to Iowa, defensive coach, secondary man. We expect him to do great things, and, and so far things are looking pretty good today. I think our secondary did a great job. He's here with his girlfriend, Mary Ann, and Drew Gardner. Drew? trying to build not only our, our alumni base, but we're certainly looking for the future who's going to be coaching this program someday. Uh, Bill Wagner won't be here forever. We've got talent that played for me. We've got some young guys and we've got some old guys that played. Uh, the young guy right now is Sammy Biddle, who played for the 2010 championship team. Okay. Coach was also on that on, on that championship team, wide receiver coach, Dave Hubscher Davis. And the crying, trying to bring some stability to this coaching staff. Uh, my first year was in 1970, and one of the players who graduated in 73 is now coaching with us. That's Chuck Kitchler. Chuck. We've certainly had a lot of things happen over the years that made this program better. Uh, one of the key ingredients is we've got to make sure our team is healthy, we've got to make sure they're taped up, we've got to make sure everything is, is really getting the kind of attention that they need. And we have a young guy who's our trainer this year, Alan Go. <coughs> Alan is here somewhere. <laughs> Part-time coach, excuse me, part-time trainer who's been doing this several years with us as Lou Salini. Lou <laughs> Another young guy who's a student here at the university, something that's been added to this program to make it better. Uh, he's a genius. We call him Jimmy Huddle. Huddle is a service of film checking and so forth. Uh, Jimmy Lingo will do the game today and will have it up and ready and sent to all of our players by tomorrow morning. That's how quick he is. Jimmy, you missed a good alley. Do if you're here. When someone mentioned uh, which one of you mentioned John Wayne, we do have a real John Wayne on the staff. And you know that. His name is Danny Earl. He was, he's my man. Uh, he's been John, he's been John Wayne for 25 years. He does so much for our kids. He's a, he's a, a tremendous man. And uh, we finally have an equipment man at every game. Okay? That's part of what we wanted. It's something that we've got. And I want to give my thank you to Danny for many, many years. Of time. Yeah. Two good work study gals. One, both of them are doing the filming for us. Uh, they lead all our events, and that's Vastella Goya and Diamond Hazard. You two gals do us. They, they helped us out early, and uh, we want to thank them as well. There's a lot of meetings. Don't you throw the flag in on <laughs> These, these folks are what makes this thing work. <laughs> Believe me, they, they make it really happen. Uh, you know, when you're a part-time coach for 40 years, 
And, you, and yet you, you made yourself into a full-time coach. You had to attend everything that the school was putting in front of you. One was obviously make sure at every meeting, do your thing as a coach, get the respect, and you're a full-time person. Uh, and that was my office secretary, Rhonda, who's here. Rhonda, I want to thank you for all the service that you have done. Thank you. We have part-time people who work in the, in the equipment room, and we really appreciate the way they treat us like a first-class program, and they're important as I. And if you treat those people <clears throat> with respect, you get great service, okay? <clears throat> Joe Crisanti is a fireman, 25 years. He's working tonight, but his assistant, Mike Fiel, Mike, thank you for all the service. The equipment is beautiful. Tremendous job. Okay. Um, it's certainly um, a wonderful evening. I'd love to have shared it with all of my family, but uh, we all have <clears throat> obligations. Some of the, some people couldn't make it, um, but I do have part of my family here today. My daughter Beth Ann, who is a uh, a Penn grad of 86 lacrosse player has three three youngsters. One turned 16 today. She has a 16-year-old birthday party for them. Sarah, the oldest of my grandchildren, nine of which I have, is a freshman this year at the University of Pennsylvania. She is going home and visiting with that party as well. And little Emily is the 13-year-old uh, who's going along with with those three young ladies. So they're not here today, but they were at the game. They saw the game and were running around. The one got a football. She's still Tom Boy. They love his wife, believe me. And hopefully we, we won't hold it against her husband that he went to Harvard because he had to come to Penn and give his word exactly. All right? But that said, um, my oldest son, Bill, actually coached. I wish he could have been here, but he said, Dad, when you retire, I'll make the trip. He said, He's got four kids. We took him down to Cummins, uh, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. He's a special ed teacher. His wife's a, a, a nurse, graduated from Rutgers, and got four lovely kids down there. And he called me today and wished me luck, and, and I love him for that as well. My youngest son, Stephen, has been, he's been the, the strength of the three of my kids, believe me, he's always there. He's done a tremendous job uh, in his career, living in uh, Chatsford. He's got his beautiful wife with him tonight, Sheila, who they met in college, and my two young grandkids. We've got Ethan over here on the side, and, and, and Giselle. Giselle is a gal in that picture right there. Oh, she was All right. Thank you for coming today. I really appreciate it. not to mention the real head coach of this program and I know you fellas did such a tremendous job. All I can mention about my wife is she's my adventurous traveling partner. I would be lost without her. She's super, she can do six and seven things at the same time and get them all done. And, I, and then that goes from spackling all the way to taking photographs. God, I love you. You're tremendous and thank you, baby. Uh, 
When I did come to Penn that, that first year in 1970, I found uh, a bunch of guys who just loved to play football. And they played for the sake of loving uh, the game. It wasn't any fanfare. Uh, the motivation was the competition. Uh, half of them never played football when I first got here. But boy, they were like sponges. They just wanted to learn. And we put together a football team, and we went into this into the league, and we we learned real fast that Army and Navy take no prisoners. Uh, they have a different scale. My team in 1970 will say the same thing that my 2013 would say. Uh, back in those days, Columbia was in the league, Rutgers was in the league, and it was Penn, Princeton, Cornell, and then you had the two service academies. And uh, it was good. It, it was good football, I believe, but it was tough to win. And I had to find a way to make the program better. And uh, Fred Shavel taught me at the first Mascot Wig banquet that uh, you got to find a way to get some money. <laughs> you have to have some funding. You have to have support. And I found that out the way he treated our first banquet. I'm standing there at the Mascot Wig. We're at the bar. And I'm buying drinks for all the coaches, and he comes up to me and he says, Coach, he says, what are you doing? I said, you don't buy the drinks for them. He said, let me introduce you to my favorite drink. It was a white Russian. I don't know what the hell white Russian was. I'm from Kramer Hill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's an open bar. None of the kids can drink, obviously. He took care of the whole thing. He said, when the season's over, he says, you call book binders and you take all your staff down there. And for his tenure, that's what we did. That was our reward. He taught me how to, to treat people that way. And uh, I, I thank him. Uh, I still have communication with him. I've had suggestions from him and recommendations for young men to play spring football. And it's worked out very, very well. We were in a struggling economy for years. Uh, I had to find a way to get the alumni involved. And I want to try and bring my thoughts to how we got to where we are tonight as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, the first alum that I met taught me another lesson. Uh, tradition and love, <coughs> the red and blue, is very important. But the most important thing from Dr. Paul Mitchell at the Princeton game, when I gave him a hat, he says, Coach, he said, you'll have a great career here as long as you kick the pants out of Princeton. <laughs> and he said, I live up in this area, and he said, "That's you have to do that. You have to build this tradition. We've got to beat those guys every year. And we've had quite a successful run against Princeton. Before Paul passed away, as many of our awards and honors are at our banquet, he, he made one of the large endowments of a position. His, his daughter has come up from Alabama several times and made that presentation of that award. The second person at one of the banquets was a manager for many of the sports. He always went for the underdogs. And his name was Russell Hewer. And he has also got a plaque that's worth 25K hanging in our locker room. Uh, came up to me and he, he said, uh, he said, you're doing a fine job, coach. He said, you, we've got to find a way to get your, your endowment going. He said, but here's a little envelope. Put 5,000 in that pocket. <clears throat> it made me really unbelievable. So I knew I had to ignite something so that the university and the athletic department and the ADs that I was working for would realize that uh, we deserve to have the ingredients to have a winning program and keep that varsity status. Now, I needed to find a way to become a full-time coach, but I'm getting paid $3,200. <laughs> Turned, when I turned 55, I retired. And uh, Nate Scott come along. <clears throat> and Nate was a captain for two years. 
He ended up coaching 10 years. He ended up becoming a chairman of the board. And uh, with his efforts, we had to find a way to, to ignite something, you know? And uh, he was the board chairman who did that. We, we put a $25,000 endowment on every position. <coughs> a lot of guys started stepping up. Uh, and I think that, that what really made this change happen, you had to have one other ingredient besides a full-time coach. We had tradition. We knew we had some money. The 96 team, <coughs> the freshman league, Timmy Workman. Let's get ready to kick Mansfield's butt. <laughs> 